So you're getting a little older. You're not old, you're just getting a little older and you're starting to worry about adult things like your mortality, your risk of stroke, diabetes, hypertension, heart attack. That's good. You should be worried about those things and you should be taking every step possible to decrease your risk of any of these bad things happening to you. Maybe you've had a friend or a relative who's just had a heart attack lately and they seemed way too young to be having a heart attack. This video is going to explain to you one of the biggest, if not the biggest, risk factor for you for having a heart attack. And also why the American Heart Association ignores this risk factor. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience, and that's what this video is about. Now, you can go to the American Heart Association's website, and you, you can look at risk factors for having a heart attack, and they have a list there. I'm going to go over this list, but there's one very important, if not the most important risk factor that's missing from the American Heart Association's list of risk factors on their website. Not sure why this is. I have a few theories we'll talk about later in this video. Uh, they might be a bit conspiratorial, but I think that once you see the research that I've linked down in the show notes, you'll understand something's amiss here. Something's not right. So let's talk about this. So if you go to the AHA website and look up risk factors, you're gonna see, first of all, the unreversible risk factors. And these include getting older, right? These include gender, because on average, men are more likely to have a heart attack than women. And then genetics, your DNA, both your uh, personal DNA, and then also your, your racial DNA, where, what race you come from, if you still use that term. And then next is the modifiable risk factors. These are risk factors you can actually do something about. They include smoking. If you're still smoking, please stop it increases your risk of a heart attack. I agree with the American Heart Association on this point. They list uh, elevated total cholesterol. They list elevated LDL cholesterol. They list high triglycerides, and they list low HDL cholesterol. They list hypertension. They list inactivity. They list being overweight or obese or morbidly obese, and they list diabetes, which I'm assuming they mean type 2 diabetes, since type 1 diabetes can't uh, currently be reversed or really modified. And then they list nutritional, other, other sources of risk for heart attack. They include having too much stress in your life. I agree with that. They include drinking too much alcohol. I agree with that. And then they put this kind of nebulous uh, risk factor, diet and nutrition. And in the short paragraph where they explain what your diet should be, they say that you should eat lots of grains, lots of fruits, low fat dairy, beans, and non-vegetable um, uh, seed oils that don't come from tropical regions. So they're, they're talking bad about coconut oil and uh, palm oil there. So they say you should eat lots of industrial seed oils, uh, low fat dairy fruits, grains and beans. That's what will protect you from heart attack. If you have a friend or family member who has any one of these risk factors that I just listed, please consider sharing this video with them. You could protect them from having a heart attack, save their life, add quality years to their life just by sharing this video. So please do that because it's important. But wait, they left out one of the biggest risk factors for heart attack of all. And one study that I linked to in the show notes below shows it to be the biggest risk factor of all for heart attack, your risk of having a heart attack. And this is hyperinsulinemia. Now that, that's a big word. What it means is that you have chronically high levels of insulin in your bloodstream. So why would they leave that out? We'll get to that, just hold on. So actually having hyperinsulinemia is shown in these four studies to be an independent risk factor. That means it's not caused by one of these other things and then indirectly leading to a heart attack. It's actually an independent risk factor. Now, all four of the research studies I posted down below in the show notes are, are done in human beings. 
They're not rat studies or rabbit studies or pig studies. They're human studies. And so they found without doubt that having a high level of insulin in your blood increases your risk of a heart attack. So what about these other risk factors up here? Well, here's the, here's the catch. Having high insulin is what causes you to have high triglycerides. Eating a diet that causes you to have high insulin causes high triglycerides also. Uh, eating that, a diet that gives you high insulin levels also causes the low HDL cholesterol, also contributes to, if not exclusively causes, the high blood pressure or hypertension that is a risk factor. A diet that gives you a high insulin level also leads to you being overweight, obese, or morbidly obese. And a diet that leads to you having chronically high insulin levels also skyrockets your risk of developing pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes or making your type 1 diabetes much worse. Now, are you ready for the conspiratorial part? So the diet that they actually recommend being full of grains and fruits and low-fat dairy and beans and vegetable seed oils, that diet actually gives you high insulin and makes your triglycerides go up and makes your HDL cholesterol go down and makes your blood pressure go up and tends to make you overweight. It is the diet that Americans and most of modern societies have been eating for the last 50 or 60 years. It's the diet that the ancient Egyptians ate that gave them such terrible heart disease. When we look at their mummies and do MRIs or CAT scans or autopsies, we find that they have terrible coronary artery disease or plaque buildup in their heart arteries even in the 30s and 40s. And so it's quite likely from their eating the diet that the American Heart Association recommends, they had lots of heart attacks at, at an age that you would think would be way too young to have a heart attack. So why does the American Heart Association recommend such a diet? And why don't they even list hyperinsulinemia as an independent risk factor for heart attack on their website? I personally believe it's because they would stand to lose lots of grants from billion dollar food corporations and billion dollar pharmaceutical corporations if they started to tell this truth, that any diet that gives you elevated levels of insulin also elevates your risk of heart attack. I don't know, I, I'm not a member of the American Heart Association by choice, and so I don't, I'm not privy to the, the backroom conversations at the AHA. All I know is, is that they are ignoring this huge risk factor and misleading you and everyone else that goes to their website on a daily basis. Millions of people are being misled right now by the American Heart Association. So now let's talk about what you can do to lower your daily insulin level back to a low normal level and therefore slash your risk of having a heart attack in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s, okay? Anybody with high insulin, regardless of their age, is at increased risk of having a heart attack. Even somebody in their 30s is at an increased risk. It's not a guarantee you'll have a heart attack, but it's an increased risk. So how do you, how do you reverse this? How do you get your insulin level, which one study that I, I linked to below found to be the biggest risk factor the biggest independent risk factor in human beings for having a heart attack was a high insulin level in the blood. You do this by eating one of the two ancestrally appropriate diets that I'm gonna put a little pop-up here and here at the end of this video that are both ancestrally appropriate, they make good common sense, and both of these diets will slash your daily insulin level back down to the low normal level. Also, if you'll implement some degree of intermittent fasting into your daily routine, you can start with a 10 hour daily fast. So that's eight hours of sleep you don't eat and then add two or more hours to that and slowly increase it to a 12, 14, and ultimately up to a 16 or 18 hour daily intermittent fast. That's gonna move your insulin way back down close to low normal, which is where you want it. That's the sweet spot, spot where you're at the least risk of having a life-ending or a life-destroying, life-altering heart attack that you just ain't down for, okay? So these two diets, the, 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 the way of eating that I'm talking about here is a low-carbohydrate diet, a ketogenic diet, a carnivore diet, plus or minus intermittent fasting. All, and when I talk about low-carb, keto, or carnivore, I'm talking about one ingredient 
real whole foods, not products, not bars and shakes and cookies and cakes and pies. I mean, one ingredient foods. So that's how you're going to lower this huge independent risk factor for heart attack back down to baseline, which is where you want to be. The way you're going to find out if you have high insulin levels is you're going to go to your doctor and you are going to ask for a hemoglobin A1C, you're going to ask for a C peptide, and you're going to ask for a fasting insulin. If any three of these tests, if any one of these tests is even one tenth of a point above the normal range, and there'll be a, a normal range listed on the lab sheet in parentheses, if you're even one tenth of a point above one of these normal ranges for any of these three tests, then you have high insulin levels at least part of the day, too much of the day, and that's increasing your risk for a heart attack. If you enjoyed this video, please take one second and click that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and cl also click the little bell button right beside it so that every time I post a new uh, uh, video, you'll be one of the very first people to know. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.